Deborah invited Deborah Mesquita, who is an IT and electronic um, expert. At present, she's working as leader uh, data scientist in entity data. Deborah, please. Thank you. I'm going to speak English because my Spanish is not very good. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we, are, we only have 10 minutes, and the title is very long, so let's go on. But we'll talk about IoT, uh, deep learning, and um, DOS attacks. So, uh, what the, in this research we are using this device is the ESP32. It's a low-cost microcontrol microcontroller, and it's widely used in IoT projects due to its development development framework and capabilities, and also because it's uh, very cheap. It, it's like uh, three dollars, so. It's a good device to work with. And IoT applications can, can solve a lot of problems in all the industries, industries like ag agriculture, home controllers, smart cities. And just as data science um, solutions are not widely used in develop developing countries, I'm from Brazil, and IoT projects are even more uh, rare. I don't see any IoT projects in my day-to-day -day, uh, there in Brazil. And the ESP32 is a, a, an affordable device, and we can use it to, to build these systems. So uh, that's why we, we choose it, and we want to spread the, the world, spread, spread it. Uh, so OK, we can build things, and we don't need a lot of money to, to do it. And IoT devices are easy targets for cyber, cyber attacks due to a lot of things, but mainly because uh, it's hard to update the software since it's in the world. And in volumetric attacks, the, the goal of the, the attacker is to send a lot of network packets in a short period of time, aiming to interrupt the, the operation of the system. And in this research, we are, we are focusing on volumetric attacks, uh, specifically uh, DOS attacks. Cool, what's the project then? Uh, we've, created, we've created a component uh, that works as a firewall inside the SP32, and it, it classifies the network packets as malicious or not, uh, using a deep learning model we, we've trained. And if a packet is, is classified as malicious, it's ignored in the, in the stack. So this way, we can prevent the, 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 dose, at the dose attacks. We trained the model using raw, feature, raw network features. Uh, earlier in this morning, we, we saw uh, research that we're, we're using uh, flow features. Here we are using raw network uh, uh, traffic, and we used 10 features from the transport layer and the internet layer. Uh, the model was trained using Keras uh, from, from TensorFlow. It's a, a Python framework to work with deep learning. And the, the model has two dense layers. It's very simple, with nine uni units each. And the final layer has a, a single unit with a sigmoid, sigmoid activation. So it gives a number between zero and one, and one is when uh, if it's above is up if it's above uh, zero dot five, we say that the packet is malicious. And to compute the loss, we are using the binary cross entropy. Um, and once the model was trained, we use we need to we train the models using computers, but to work on the ESP32, we need to convert it. And we use TF Lite uh, from Keras also, which is a, a library to uh, bring the, mod the deep learning models to these devices. And 
After that, we also need to convert it to a C++ file. The ESP32 stack uses, we program with C++, and we convert the model to C++ so we can uh, add the model to the, to the device at compiling, compile, compile time. Uh, the results. The model was trained using this data set, Seek IoT data set, 2002. 22. And the overall accuracy of, accuracy of the, the model was 97% and uh, cool, 97% oh, uh, is it good or not? The answer to whether the model works or not depends on the application running on the SP device, depends on the IoT system in place. And we wanted to to check if if the model was working in another environment, so we simulated a, a, a system using Python. We used Python to create a legitimate traffic, a, a Python script to create a legitimate traffic, and another Python script to act as the attacker. And the the application we are we are uh, using is a UDP, UDP server running on the ESP32, and the attacks ran from for six, 60 seconds, and the real traffic ran for for 80 seconds. Uh, here we have the numbers, but well, <laughs> the main point is this, this slide. Uh, with the firewall, we we saw that uh, the uh, we, we saw a reduction of the uh, malicious packets from 73% uh, of the packets were dropped, but uh, which is uh, good, I guess. But if the if we had the same um, the same results as we did in the training in, in the test data set, these numbers should be 99%. So we can see that uh, the the um, accuracy wasn't uh, it was different from the from the accuracy we saw on the on the test test data set. And what did we learn from it? Uh, we observed that those attacks can vary significantly significantly in nature, and like for uh, all the the. Um, the attacks in the cybersecurity world, world are always changing, so we think that uh, it's a better a better idea is to treat the the problem as a anomaly detection problem. So we learn what is the real traffic, and everything that's different than that is a uh, malicious traffic, and. Uh, so with the, the test, we, we saw that a model training for, trained for one type of attack, attack may not effectively detect uh, other types of attacks. And what to do then? We recommend that the developers of these uh, applications for the IoT devices train their, their own models using their, their traffic. And... Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I didn't memorize the, <laughs> the slides. <laughs> Let's wait. If <laughs> uh, I don't even have a joke to to tell you guys. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can remember. Okay. <laughs> Why we are waiting? Um, one thing that was the main one of the main challenges of the research was creating the the training in the test sets because in the data set we have uh, pcap files with all the oh we come back we have pcap files with all the 
the real traffic and also pick up files with um, malicious packets and how to blend these two to create the training in the test data sets were, was a challenge and in the paper we, we explored that. Okay, okay. Yeah, a model training for one type of attack may not work effectively, effectively uh, for another type of attack. And we recommend that the, the application developers train their own models. Uh, and they can replace, simply replace the model in the system we created so they don't, don't need to do all the work we did. It's simply to change, change the model. All the code for this project is available on GitHub. And this research was part of the IT Women Mentoring Program from LACNIC. And the goal was to promote the participation and leadership of women in the LACNIC community. Uh, thank you. It was really nice. And yeah, thanks. Um, I think we have questions. Cool. Muchas gracias, Débora, por su presentación. Thank you, Deborah, for your presentation. I think that here we have a question in the audience. Adelante. I see uh, Brazilians. So I'll ask my question in Portuguese. In all the things that you presented now, regarding DRS, of course it's DRS. You, did you see some kind of DRS attack in IPv6? In IPv6, no. Voy a hablar en... Español. This is the one that I have, the information I have available, and I had a large number of malicious and non-malicious packets at the data set. Now, I, I don't know if it's IB6. I am new in this field, so I really just landed here. But what determined the election of why the attack took place is because I had this data set. I don't know whether the data set also had IPv6. This was created like that. Some researchers created a room with IoT devices. They took the packets and made these available in the network. So I don't know too much about the data set and what the protocol that was used was. Thank you. We have no remote questions, so I'd like to give uh, Deborah a big round of applause. Thank you for your presentation. A la continuación en este bloque